Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless the Quiz, where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Sophie, this is my mum Helen, and we are from Leatherhead in Surrey. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Faye, this is my dad Graham, and we're from Northamptonshire. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Sai, this is my friend Daniel, and we're from London. And finally, couple number four. Uh, hi, this is Ben, I'm Chris, and we're friends from Bristol. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Great to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He came, he saw, he napped, he snacked, he went through costume and makeup, but now, if he can be bothered, he'll conquer. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon Good to afternoon. you. Good afternoon. Two returning pairs, Helen and Sophie are back, back on podium one as well, knocked out in round one last time as well. It's not going to happen today, I suspect. <laughs> uh, and podium four, Chris and Ben, welcome back, got knocked out in round two as well. Welcome to our newcomers as well. It's a fun first round, a very sort of British second round as well. What does that mean, I wonder? <laughs> Very exciting, Rich. Looking forward to that. Uh, now, Nick and Lisa didn't win the jackpot last time. It means we're going to add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot, wait for this, starts off at £3,000. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Just remember, you know all this, but it's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. Just keep that at the back of your minds. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... The language of cinema. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Best Picture Oscar winners by definition. Richard. On each board, we're going to show you seven definitions and they will all lead you to the name of a Best Picture winner at the Oscars. Uh, we'll give you the initial of that film as well and the year in which it won. Seven on the first board, seven on the second board, 14 and all to have a go at home. Good luck. OK, so you've got to guess the name of these Best Picture Oscar winners from the clues on the board. Here's our first board of seven clues. And we've got the largest city of Morocco. It is a seaport on the Atlantic coast. C, 1944. Difficult and full of problems. R, 1977. A small settlement, generally smaller than a village and without a church. H, 1949. Still the subject of anger or resentment following an offence or mistake. U, 1993. Collide violently with an obstacle or another vehicle. C, 2006. The ship from Greek mythology on which Jason sailed to fetch the Golden Fleece, A, 2013, and modified forelimbs that bear large feathers and are used for flying, W, 1929. I'm going to read those clues again. The largest city of Morocco, it's a seaport on the Atlantic coast, difficult and full of problems, a small settlement, generally smaller than a village and without a church, still a subject of anger or resentment following an offence or mistake, Collide violently with an obstacle or another vehicle. The ship from Greek mythology in which Jason sails to fetch the Golden Fleece. And modified forelimbs that bear large feathers and are used for flying. Sophie, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. OK, last time we discovered that you are studying for your chartered accountancy. Yes, I am. Two yeah. more years to go. Yes. <laughs> what are the bright highlights on your horizon, though, apart from the chartered accountancy? I'm hoping to do some more travelling as well. Where have you been so far? Uh, so I did a gap year and I did some travelling around South America and Southeast okay. Asia. Where have you yet to go? Where do you want to go? Um, I'd love to go to Antarctica and I'd love to do more of Africa <laughs> and just travel around all the states of the USA. Excellent. So. Now, Sophie. Yes. Here we have Best Picture winners. I know a few, mm -hmm. but I think the one I'm most confident is the ship from the Greek mythology on which Jason sailed to fetch the Golden Fleece and that is Argo. Argo. Yes. Argo, says Sophie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Argo. Argo is right. That's a good answer. 28. Very well done, Sophie. Gets us off to a flying start. 28 for Argo. Yeah, directed by and starring Ben Affleck, all about the Iran uh, hostage crisis. It's a good film, Argo. It's a great film. Mm, like, really... Yeah. Like, tense. Very. 
Thanks, Richard. Now, Faye, welcome to Pointless. Hello. Lovely to have you here from Northamptonshire. What keeps you busy in Northamptonshire? Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I am a cake decorator. <gasps> I didn't bring cake, though. What? <sighs> but if I get through to the next round, to the next one, I will bring cake. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. What's your favourite medium for decorating the cake? Mm, I like making like flowers and fiddly bits and pieces. Mm, I do mm, a lot of wedding cakes. Mm, I do like a cake. Mm, I like a cake. I, I like a, a well-decorated cake. cake. <gasps> <laughs> Faye, what would you like to go for on our board? I'm going to go for the largest city of Morocco as Casablanca. Casablanca, says Faye. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Faye. Casablanca. Fifty-five. 55 for Casablanca. Yeah, Dooley Wilson, who plays the, he's the, he plays Sam, the pianist in, the, in Casablanca, very famously, is a drummer, couldn't play the piano. Really? Yeah. There we are. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, now, Saeed, welcome. Hello. Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Saeed. Um, I'm a business director for a marketing company in London. What sort of marketing do you specialise in? Um, so I manage a team of 45 and we um, look after all the advertising that you see on social networks. So unfortunately, we do all of that kind of Stuff that knows you better than you know yourself. Wow, yeah. that's clever. Yeah. All those cookies got to go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Saeed, what are you thinking? So I would like to go for collide violently with an obstacle or another vehicle um, crash. Crash, yeah. says Saeed. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said crash. It's absolutely right. 73. 73. Yeah, I think a lot of that 73 was from the clue rather than from the film. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Chris, welcome back. Oh, we had to say goodbye to you in round two last time. That was too early, I think. <laughs> We've all accepted that. Um, <laughs> Chris, remind us about yourself. Uh, sure, so uh, I'm a software engineer. I'm originally from Scotland, but uh, I live in Bristol uh, with Ben. And how do you and Ben know each other? My uh, fiance does a chemistry PhD with Ben, so we met through her. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. After hours, discussing chemistry. Well, I try and avoid it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> OK, there we go. Now, Chris, this board is all yours. Fill in all those blanks for okay. us. Uh, difficult and full of problems, I really have no idea. Your small settlement, I suppose, is a hamlet. Still the subject of anger or resentment. Kind of a guess, but maybe unforgiven. And then um, large forelimbs are wings. Wings is going to be a big scorer, so I might take a bit of a punt on um, still the subject of anger or resentment following an offence or mistake. Unforgiven? Unforgiven. Well, let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said unforgiven. It is unforgiven. It is unforgiven. I think, Chris, that is going to be a brilliant answer. And so it is. Look at 19. Very well done indeed. Great work, Chris. Yeah, Clint Eastwood gave his um, mum a small role in that film, but then he cut her out in the edit. <gasps> which wasn't in the film. Was he always planning to do that? I don't know, sure. but he, he had to thank her in his Oscar acceptance speech. So that was oh, nice. Just about got away so with nice. it. That is um, nice. Shall we fill in the rest of these? Yes. Uh, we'll leave R for the moment. W, quite right, is Wings. And again, a big score, I think, just because of the clue. Uh, would have scored you 67 points. The Small Settlement is Hamlet. And that would have scored you 57. Now, this is a very famous film, but a very low score. And it is... Difficult and full of... Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <sighs> it scored yes. you four points. It's annoying, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is annoying. Yeah. Oh. oh, I'd have loved to have got that. <laughs> oh, well, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through our round. Let's have a look at those scores. 19. Well done, Chris. Best score of the past there. Fantastic. Then we travel up to 28. Sophie and Helen. Very good indeed, our returning pairs looking very strong. Uh, Faye and Graham on 55, not bad. 73, though, is where Saeed and Daniel are. So, Daniel, let's have a nice low score from you. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put seven more clues to Best Picture Oscar-winning films up on the board, and here they come. A person trained to fight with weapons in an arena in ancient Rome, G, 2001. Have a second job, typically, secretly and at night, in addition to one's regular employment. M, 2017. A formal procession of people on horseback or riding in vehicles. C, 1934. Surname of the mother and son who both served as Prime Minister of India in the 1980s. G, 1983. The most popular city in Illinois, USA. C, 
2003, a subdivision of a company of soldiers, usually commanded by a subaltern or lieutenant, P, 1987, and of exceptional strength, size or power, T, 1998. I shall read those all again. A person trained to fight with weapons in an arena in ancient Rome. Have a second job, typically secretly and at night, in addition to one's regular employment. A formal procession of people on horseback or riding in vehicles. Surname of the mother and son who both served as Prime Minister of India in the 1980s. The most populous city in Illinois, USA. A subdivision of a company of soldiers, usually commanded by a subaltern or lieutenant, and of exceptional strength, size or power. There we go. Now then, Ben, welcome back. Hello. Great to have you amongst our number one more time. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Uh, so I'm a chemistry PhD student living in Bristol at the moment, uh, from Herefordshire originally, uh, moved down there to study. And how much longer is the PhD going to uh, go for? Two more years now. Two more yeah. years, Bristol. But Bristol's lovely, isn't yeah, it? It's a great city, yeah. OK, very good. And uh, what are your interests when you're, when you're um, not doing that? What, what, what do you love to do? Uh, the things I enjoy most are sport, so football and rugby mainly. Uh, I currently play five-a-side football with the chemistry department, and that's about it, really. OK, now, Ben, you're on 19. If you could yes. score 53 or less, even at this early stage, you're in round two. Yes. Um, well, because we've got such a great score, I think I'm going to try and play it safe. Yeah, <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> it might be a bit boring, but I'm going for it. Um, so I think I'm going to go for the top one and go Gladiator. OK, Gladiator, here's your red line. Can you get below that red line with Gladiator? Let's find out. It's right. It's a big score, Ben. That's uh, 84, taking your total up to 103. Yeah, I think you might have been overestimating slightly how safe you needed to, uh, <laughs> to take it there. Very big score. But easy clue, and everyone knows the film. Bad I combination. think to play it safe really is to go for something that's a low score. That is not safe. That's really dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. Verging on lethal. <laughs> Blimey, you've really, you've really upset him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Now, uh, Daniel, welcome Hello. to Pointless. Wonderful to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Daniel. Uh, so I work in sales. I basically pitch and sell uh, creative advertising campaigns uh, for a weekly London-based publication. So what are your interests, Daniel? So I'm quite into art, so I've been to uh, quite a few art exhibitions lately, um, into um, life drawing classes as well, uh, frequently attending those. Doing the drawing? Or... Indeed, yes. yes. Not disrobing. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't know if I quite have the confidence for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel, now listen, you're on 73, you were the high scorers halfway through the round, but uh, if you can score 29 or less at this point, it's looking good. OK, um, so there are... A couple on there that I am quite sure of, but not 100%. So I think the answer I'm going to go for is the second one. I have a second job, typically secretly at night, uh, and say Moonlight. OK, Moonlight. Yes. There we are. OK, there is your red line. Moonlight. Let's see if you can get below that red line with Moonlight. Absolutely right. Oh, bang on, it's exactly what you needed. 29, very well done indeed. Takes your total up to 102. You are in round two, very well done. Yeah, just that phrase, playing it safe. Playing it safe, <laughs> keeps coming back to you. There we are. Very good, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Graham, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you with us. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Graham. Um, I'm retired last year. I was a phlebotomist working for the Leicester Blood Service. It's lovely just to be able to say phlebotomist. Yeah. Best team uh, in the country, Leicester team. Yeah, oh, the Leicester team. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you mean the phlebotomy team? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Good. Oh, and, the, and the Leicester team as well. Well, there we go. They get some recognition <laughs> too, I suppose. But uh, Graham, uh, what, what do you love to do now? What's your? What, what um, I, like, your I like walking, uh, looking after grandchildren. I've got three grandchildren. Oh, very. Chloe, nice. Jude, and Amelie. Amelie. Oh, we just remembered Amelie in time. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, well done. Now, Graham, you are on fifty-five. Forty-seven or less gets you into round two. I'm going to go for the formal procession of people on horseback and say cavalcade. Cavalcade, says Graham. OK, here is your red line. Can you get below that with cavalcade? Let's find out. It's right. And you are through. Very well done indeed. 16. 16, I can confidently say, is the lowest score of the round so far. 71 is your total. Well done. That's a terrific answer. Well played. And it's all those people who said convoy at home. It was, uh, it was cavalcade. <laughs> uh, based on the Noel Coward play. 
Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, Helen. And so, Helen, welcome back. Remind us yeah. all about yourself, Helen. Oh, I just abandoned careers left, right and centre. <laughs> this is what we discovered last time. <laughs> Helen, I mean, you, yeah. were in, you were in the law, abandoned it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else have you abandoned? Oh, you, no, oh no, Chester, no, like, Chester, yeah. the city of Chester. Yes, you, they've even made you a freeman of the city of Chester. Uh, yeah, I know. And you've walked I away. I still go back a lot, though. Um, what's on the horizon, Helen? What are you, what are you hoping to do this well, year? Well, I finished uh, my master's and I'm hoping when I've done some house extension work to get back and I'd like to do a PhD if I possibly can. Very good. In the history. In the yes, exactly. I like the study of women's history in the 20th women's century. Women's history in the 20th century. Fantastic. Yeah. OK, now, Helen, 28 is your score at the moment. 74 yes. or less gets you into the next round. Right. Do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? Well, um, surname of the mother and surname of third, that's Gandhi. Most popular city in Illinois, USA, is Chicago. A subdivision of a company of soldiers usually commanded uh, by a subaltern or lieutenant is platoon. And of exceptional strength, size or power, that's one I'm struggling with. So I think I'm going to have to go for platoon. Brilliant. OK, platoon says, Helen, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. There's your red light. It's nice and high. Can you get below it, platoon? It's right, and you're through. Very well done. Very well done indeed. 61, good enough. Takes your total up to 89. You were right about playing it safe. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall we fill in the rest of these? Yes. Uh, now, the surname you're quite right was Gandhi. That would have seen you through as well. By 1.74, that would have scored you. Um, the most popular city in Illinois is Chicago. That would have scored you 43. And do you know this bottom one? Titanic. Titanic. So would have scored you 27. Three people on our poll said Terminator for that last one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our first round. We have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. And Ben and Chris. Oh, Chris, you were doing so well there. Well, you can have me back if you like. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, I know. <laughs> Lovely low score. I honestly thought, well, that's nice. They're just going to storm it, this one. <laughs> Uh, and then old Mr. Safety comes in. <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry, 103, it's just too high. We have to say goodbye to you, but it's been lovely having you here. Thank you so much. Ben and Chris, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> and so three pairs remain. Very well done, all of you. So best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is hot drinks. The hot drinks category, for which we're famous. <laughs> uh, can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many top tea-producing countries as they could. Richard. Yeah, in 2017, there were 34 countries in the world which produced over 1,000 tonnes of tea, according to the UN. Can you name any of those 34 countries, please? As always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN in its own right. Thank you very much. Said, very British. In... Cup of, nice cup of tea. Nice cup of but tea. But where does it come from? Well, mm. I've got a good answer for this. Oh, have you? I bet someone else will take it. OK. If they don't, then you say it at the end. Yeah. Uh, Sophie. Hi. Tea. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, I'm... I mean, I love tea. I, li I like herbal teas mostly. I've got mm. quite a large cabinet of them. Mm. But I'm trying to think of countries that produce them. <laughs> mm. um, this is just normal tea, no herbal teas tea. or fruit oh, okay. teas. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for, hopefully, a nice, good, a low answer of Cambodia. Cambodia, says Sophie. Cambodia. Let's find out if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Cambodia. Oh, oh, bad luck. Oh, that seems right, but so wrong. I'm so sorry. It scores you 100 points. Yeah, I think that's very unlucky. You know, yeah. you didn't go for an obvious one. I think that's very unlucky. There we are. Uh, Faye. I know the two obvious ones, but I'm not going to go for those. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Let's not go the gladiator route. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to guess and say Japan. Japan. Interesting. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Japan. It's right. 
And it's a great answer. 14. Very well done indeed. Okay. Very well done. Yeah, it's very well worked out. 81,000 tonnes of tea produced by Japan in 2017. Wow. That's a lot of tea. That's a lot of tea. Thank you very much. Uh, Daniel? Um, I've got a few potential options in my head. Um, I'm going to give my answer as... India. India. OK. Daniel says India. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right, and it scores 90. Yes, that's a high score. 90 for India. Uh, yeah, 1.3 million tonnes uh, coming from India. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 14, Faye. Very well done indeed. 14. Lovely low score there. Then we travel quite a long way to 90, where we find Daniel and Saeed. And then it's just a little hop up to 100, where we find Sophie and Helen. It's nice that you've got some company up there, which is good. <laughs> you know, you're not way out in front. Um, but Helen, we need a, 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 an answer like Cambodia, but right. Yeah. Sort of somewhere down here. <laughs> but, you know, that's the kind... You know, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. Um, well done, everybody. Uh, best of luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so, Saeed, we are looking for the name of any country that produced over 1,000 tonnes of tea in 2017. Um, I'm going to go with Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, says Saeed. Uh, here's your red line. It's going to be low, but let's see how far down the column we get with Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is right. <laughs> Not bad. Look, 44. 134 is your total. Could have done enough there. Yeah, very popular in the UK, Sri Lankan tea. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Graham, good news for you. You're through whatever you score here. Right. Lovely low score from Faye in the first pass there. I've got to go for a risky one, I think. Good. Afghanistan. 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 Yeah. I mean, why not? Why on earth not? Let's find out. Afghanistan, is that right? How many people said it? No red line for you. You're already through. No. So, you know, it sort of stands to reason, though, doesn't it? But uh, as it turns out, wrong. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 114. Yeah, I would have put money on that being right. I have to say, it feels like it would be mm, right. Doesn't it? Uh, but I would have put money on Cambodia as well. <laughs> so uh, I would have lost a lot of money in this round. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Helen, there you are. You're on 100. The high score is 134. You have to score 33 or less. I'm going to go with Malaysia. 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 Yes. OK, here is your red line. <sighs> I think you can do that. I think that's achievable. Let's find out. Malaysia, is it right? How many of our 100 people said it? It is right. And you've done it. Very well done oh. indeed. Head to head awaits. Oh, down to five. Superb. Very well done oh. indeed. 105. <sighs> Is your total. <sighs> well played. Lovely Thank end you. to the round. Um, and, in fact, I deserve it as well, because I'll tell you how good a wrong answer Cambodia was and how unlucky it was. Thailand is a correct answer for nine. Vietnam is a correct answer for six. <laughs> Myanmar is a correct answer for four. And Laos is a correct answer is a pointless oh, no. answer as well. So everywhere around <laughs> Cambodia was an answer for not Cambodia. <laughs> but you are through anyway. Um, shall we take a look at a few low scores here and then we'll go through um, the pointless answers? Oh, can answers. I try out my one? Oh, yes, of I course. I was going to try my oh, Malawi. 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 Malawi, that's interesting. Ooh. Well, it's a pointless answer. Oh, Very well that's done. Good. Very well done. <laughs> Low scores, you'd have got eight for Bangladesh, seven for Nepal, you'd have got uh, five for Uganda, four for Ethiopia, South Africa, Turkey, weirdly. Two points for Argentina, Peru, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, one for Iran, one for Mozambique, one for Rwanda, one for South Korea. Uh, and let's take a look at the pointless answers now. These would have added £250 to the jackpot. You could have said Bolivia, Burundi, Cameroon, DRC, Ecuador, Georgia. Uh, there's Lao, there's Malawi and Papua New Guinea. Very well done if you said any of those at home. Mauritius as well was a pointless answer. Just look at the top three. Yeah. These are the top three that people said when we asked them at home. We've heard a couple of these already. Sri Lanka was third with 44, then China was 72. And India way out on the top there with 90. 
Thanks very much, Richard. So we are at the end of our second round and I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to another pair. Said and Daniel, I'm sorry, it is you on 134. No wrong answers there, but India, I'm afraid that was a punishing one to go for there. Um, and we will see you again next time, Said and Daniel. Look forward to that very much. Meantime, thanks so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Graham and Faye, Helen and Sophie. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for that jackpot currently standing, let's not forget, at £3,000. So this is where teamwork comes into play and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. This is exciting. Parent and daughter special. Yeah. That's nice. Parent we finally found daughter. out what's, uh, what's better, dads or mums. Yeah. North Hans <laughs> or Surrey. Oh. <laughs> Look at it however you like. This is going to be exciting and hard won, I think. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Here is your first question and it concerns... Famous glasses wearers without glasses. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Firstly, who Can said that? <laughs> Secondly, we're going to show you five pictures now of people who are used to... We're used to seeing wearing glasses, but they're not wearing their glasses. Can you identify these five people, please? You didn't used to wear glasses when I first... When I, I mean, you wear them occasionally. Contact lenses, yeah. Yeah, contact wear. lenses, yeah. 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 First time I met you, you were wearing a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, OK, let's reveal our pictures of famous people who wear glasses without glasses. And here they are. We have got A... B. C. D. And E. Some good photos. They're there, really man. good. Yeah. OK, there we are. Who are these famous glasses wearers without their glasses? Graham and Faye, you get to go first. I know the obvious ones, but... Do you know C? No. Oh, OK. Uh, I'll go for C. Robert Peston. Robert Peston. Robert Peston, say Graham and Faye. Now, Helen and Sophie, the board's all yours. Talk us through them. Um, <laughs> I think A is Elton John, B is Sue Perkins, D, I think, might be Sue Pollard, and E is Eric Morecambe. Should we take a punt? Yes, yeah. we'll go for soup Hollard, D. One of the two soups, Erkins or Hollard. <laughs> yes. Um, OK, so you're going to go for Sue Pollard. We have Robert Peston and we have Sue Pollard. Graham and Faye have gone for Robert Peston for C. Let's see how many people said that. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Very strong. <laughs> Robert Peston, 10. Helen and Sophie, let's see. You've gone for Sue Pollard for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. <laughs> Down it goes to 26. <laughs> Very well done indeed, Graham and Faye. After one question, you're up 1-0. Well, those were the best two answers on the board. Couldn't have played that round better, both teams. Well played, and you're right about all the others, but let's take a look at the scores. A is Elton John. He would have scored you 79. Sue Perkins would have scored you 42. I've never seen Eric Morecambe without his glasses. Is that before. funny? Yeah, I isn't that interesting? I mean, you kind of know exactly who it is, yeah. but it's, uh, it looks so different. And he would have scored you 43. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Helen and Sophie, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Good luck. Our second question today is all about Mixed bag. Richard. Five clues now, all relating in some way or another to the word bag. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal all our bag clues. Pink and white striped cloth cat, the title character of a 1970 animated children's TV series. US singer nicknamed the Godfather of Soul, who had a 1965 hit with Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. 
container for a type of pungent vegetable with concentric layers and a nickname for the goal net in football, heavy stuffed cylindrical bag used by boxers in training, and TV comedy drama series starring Phoebe Waller-Bridge, first broadcast in 2016. I'm going to read those clues again. Pink and white striped cloth cat, the title character of a 1970 animated children's TV series. US singer nicknamed the Godfather of Soul, who had a 1965 hit with Papa's Got a Brand New Bag. Container for a type of pungent vegetable with concentric layers and a nickname for the goal net in football. Heavy stuffed cylindrical bag used by boxers in training. And TV comedy drama series starring Phoebe Waller-Bridge, first broadcast in 2016. So there we are. Um, Helen and Sophie, you get to go first. Yeah. Um, should we do the TV comedy yeah. drama um, starring Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Fleabag? Fleabag, say Helen and Sophie. Now, Graham and Faye, do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? Uh, um, top one's... Bagpuss. Bagpuss. Uh, second one's James Brown. Don't know the third one. And um, Punchbag. Uh, pink and white striped cloth cap. Bagpuss. OK, Bagpuss. So, we have Fleabag, we have Bagpuss. Uh, Helen and Sophie have gone for Fleabag. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It is Fleabag. Down it goes to 22. <laughs> Graham and Faye, meanwhile, have gone for Bagpuss. Let's see how many of our 100 said Bagpuss. It's right... Oh, that's a high score. 67 for Bagpuss. Very well done, Helen and Sophie, back in contention. After two questions, it's one all. And once again, the first team to go picks the best answer on the board as well. So, terrific head-to-head -head so far for the bag. Best answer you could have got. Uh, the US singer was James Brown. It would have scored you 29 points. The container uh, and the name for a gold net in football. It's the onion, onion bag. bag. Yeah, the onion bag. It would have scored you 25. And the cylindrical bag, it is a punch bag. Big scorer, though. 71 points for that. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So here comes the decider. This is the third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final to play for that jackpot. So best of luck to both pairs. Our third question today is all about animals in classical music. Richard. Five titles now are pieces of classical music or ballet or opera, but we've missed out the word of an animal from each title. Can you tell me what the animal is, please? Best of luck, both teams. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five pieces of classical music with a missing animal, and here they are. Blank Lake, Tchaikovsky. The Blank's Feast, Roussel. The Blank Ascending, Vaughan Williams. Peter and the Blank, Prokofiev. And The Thieving Blank, Rossini. I shall read those all again. Blank Lake, Tchaikovsky. The Blank's Feast, Roussel. The Blank Ascending, Vaughan Williams, Peter and the Blank, Prokofiev, and The Thieving Blank, Rossini. There we are. Graham and Faye will go first. Uh, we will go for the fourth one. Peter and the Wolf. Peter and the Wolf, say Graham and Faye. Helen and Sophie, talk us through the rest of that board, if you can. Um, I think it's Swan Lake. Um, not too sure about the second one, and I think the third one is the Lark Ascending, and I think the last one is the Thieving Magpie. We'll go I for the Lark Ascending, I think. The Lark Ascending, say Helen and Sophie. So we have Wolf versus Lark. Graham and Faye went Wolf. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Wolf. Wolf is right. 76, though. That's a high <laughs> score. Peter and the Wolf. Helen and Sophie have gone for the lark ascending. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said lark. It's right, and it wins you the point. Very well done indeed. Down it goes to 33. <laughs> that means, Helen and Sophie, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Great head-to-head -head from everybody there. We'll fill in the rest of these. You're quite right, it is the, uh, the thieving magpie. That would have scored you 40 points. Um, Swan Lake is a very big score. 95 for Swan Lake. Now, do you know this next one? It's the best answer by a mile. Do you know? I have no idea. Well, the Spider's Feast. The Spider's Feast, one point. 
you've said that. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Graham and Faye, I'm afraid it is you, but you've played so well across the show today and you'll be back next time, which is great news for us. Um, anyway, we look forward to that. Thank you so much, uh, Graham and Faye. <laughs> but for Helen and Sophie, it is now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Helen and Sophie. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot at the end of today's show. The jackpot is standing at £3,000. There it is. <laughs> so, yes, we said goodbye far too early last time. And, and here you are. In fact, do you know what this is? Helen, this is your form, you see. You have a way of ditching something halfway through and then coming back <laughs> and storming it. And uh, that's what you've done. Yeah. That is what has happened today. <laughs> there we are. And you've proved that mums are better than dads. Oh, yes. Yep. There oh, we it? are. Dad, if you're watching, I didn't really mean that. Sorry, that sounds... <laughs> sorry. You, you, you. Um, as always, though, you need to choose your category from the four we put up on the board today. Is there anything you particularly want to see? What's the... I mean... You... Oh, please, no sport. <laughs> I must say, you're quite good at history. Uh, yeah, history. Like, no, anything not sport. <laughs> OK, well, there should be other things than sport. Let's hope. Well, let's see. Today's selection looks like this. We have got... Brit Award winners in the 2010s, boxing, Berlin, stage musicals based on films. Oh, can't do Brit Award winners. You really Not do. in the 2010s. Actually. No. no. <laughs> boxing, definitely not. No. Berlin, not possible. You're, you're OK with stage musicals. I d yeah, but I, I don't know. It depends what's asked. <laughs> Should we, should we give it a go? Yeah, I go. Or do you, yeah, I'm not yeah. much good at Berlin. No, okay. Do you think, <laughs> should we go stage should musicals? Stage musicals. Okay, please. stage musicals based on films, Richard. Okay, very best of luck. We're looking for any song that appears on the following, please. Any song from the original cast recording of Billy Elliot the Musical from 2005. Any song from the original cast recording of Hairspray from 2002. Or any song from the original cast recording of Shrek the Musical in 2011. So any song from those original cast recordings, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win the jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. You don't have to answer all three categories. Focus on the ones you like the look of. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So, I don't know any Billy Elliot ones. No, no, no. Um, no, no hairspray, uh, there's a few... I, I've got Quick. them in my head. Just no. sing them. Um, no. <laughs> Shrek the Musical, uh, Freak Flag, uh, What's Up in Duloc. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Something about the telly? Mum... No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Uh, Freak Flag, Overture. Um, oh, no, I can't think of any. Um, you got three. Th uh, no, I got Freak, uh, freak Flag, um, What's up in Duloc? Oh, gosh, I can't think of the third one. Um, Some title. I think it's uh, Spray. Oh, no, I can't think. Oh, I can't think of it. No, it's really annoying. I can sing the song. Uh, sing it. I'm not going to sing it. Um, oh, Ten seconds left. Uh, uh, no, I can't think. Oh, I can't think of it. Yes, yeah, the time. Yeah, has, yeah, has, um, good morning, Baltimore. Okay, okay that's fabulous. fabulous. There we are. Yeah. Your time is up. <laughs> Let's have your three answers. What have you got? All right, so it'll be uh, Good Morning, Baltimore. From? From Hairspray. Good Morning, Baltimore. Uh, What's Up in Duloc by Shrek, uh, from Shrek the Musical. What's Up in Duloc. And uh, Freak Flag. From and Shrek Freak Musical. Flag. Yeah. Of the three of them, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? <sighs> Probably Freak Flag. Freak Flag goes yeah. last. Least likely to be pointless. Uh, good morning, Baltimore. Good morning, Baltimore. And what's up in Duloc goes in the yes. middle. Brilliant. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Good Morning, Baltimore, What's Up in Duloc, and Freak Flag. There we are. Three good answers there. Now, if one of these were to win that jackpot for you, what would you like to do with the money? 3,000 quid. Not a bad thing to win. Um, well, I'm... Currently still living with my parents, and as lovely as they are, I would love to move out into London, so we'll probably go towards that. <laughs> OK, Helen? <laughs> I'd like to give her the money to go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 
That's hilarious. OK, so your first, your first answer was Good Morning Baltimore. In this case, we were looking for songs from Hairspray, the musical. Uh, let us find out how many of our 100 people said it. If it's pointless, you leave with three grand. How many people said Good Morning Baltimore? It's right. Good Morning Baltimore now takes us down through the 20s. We're going through the teens. We are into single figures. Still going down, still going to two. Oh, this is superb. And that was the one you thought was your least likely to be pointless. Things are looking up. <laughs> um, OK, not a pointless answer, though. So let's move on to your next answer. What's up in Duloc? We've now moved to Shrek the musical. If this is a pointless answer, you leave here with £3,000. How many people said, what's up in Duloc? Seemingly, that's an incorrect answer. It all will be explained shortly. OK, let's move on to your third and final answer. Freak Flag. Again, we're looking for songs from Shrek the Musical. If Freak Flag is pointless, you leave here with £3,000. Very best of luck. How many people said Freak Flag? That's right. Your first answer was Good Morning, Baltimore. That took us all the way down to two. Your second answer, What's Up in Duloc, was incorrect. But your third and final answer has taken us down through the... Thing. <laughs> Well done, indeed. Freak flag. That was like, absolutely superb. Very well done, indeed. Wow. Congratulations, Freak Flag was a pointless answer. You are moving out. Oh. With that jackpot of £3,000. Very well done, indeed. Helen and Sophie, brilliant. Beautifully done, very well played, very well deserved as well. It's just what's up Duloc, not what's up in Duloc, so we couldn't give you that one there, but it didn't matter because you had a pointless answer there. Congratulations, well done if you said it at home as well. Uh, let's start with Billy Elliot, the musical. All of these are pointless answers. You could have said Born to Boogie, Expressing Yourself, Merry Christmas, Maggie Thatcher. It was a pointless answer. Solidarity, Angry Dance, Deep Into the Ground, He Could Be a Star, Once We Were Kings, uh, The Letter and the Stars Look Down. All of those were pointless answers as well. Hairspray now, it's my favourite musical, Hairspray, uh, in case you're wondering. All of these were pointless answers. Big, blonde and beautiful, Mama, I'm a big girl now, Miss Baltimore Crabs, the nicest kids in town is a pointless answer. You could have had uh, Cooties, I know where I've been, uh, Run and Tell That, The Big Dollhouse and Timeless, to me, they were all pointless answers there. And finally, songs from Shrek the Musical, which you clearly know very well. <laughs> you could have had Build a Wall, Story of My Life, When Words Fail, who I'd be. In fact, everything apart from I'm a Believer and I Think I Got You Beat. Every other song on that soundtrack recording was a pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Helen and Sophie, who take away today's jackpot of £3,000. Brilliant. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.